praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Dear friends, welcome as we are journeying in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Today we are going to reflect on chapter 26. Here we have uh, 32 verses. And here we see Paul defends himself before Agrippa. Paul tells of his uh, conversion. Paul tells of his preaching. Paul appeals to Agrippa to believe. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you, we glorify you, we thank you for all the blessings that you have shot upon us. As we are reflecting on chapter 26 of the Acts, inspire us, fill us with your Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds to accept the truth of the scriptures. Give us that courage which Paul had in his life, conviction that he had in his life. Protect us from every danger and evil. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us take chapter 26 of Acts of the Apostles. Agrippa said to Paul, You have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and began to defend himself. I consider myself fortunate that it is before you. King Agrippa, I am to make my defense today against all the accusations of the Jews because you are especially familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg of you to listen to me patiently. All the Jews know my way of life from my youth. A life spent from the beginning among my own people and in Jerusalem. They have known for a long time, if they were willing to testify, that I have belonged to the strictest sect of our religion and lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand here on trial on account of my hope in the promise made by God to our ancestors a promise that our twelve tribes hope to attain as they earnestly worship day and night. It is for this hope, Your Excellency, that I am accused by Jews. Why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? Indeed, I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things against the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is what I did in Jerusalem. With authority received from the chief priests, I not only locked up many of the saints in prison, but I also cast my vote against them when they were being condemned to death. By punishing them often in all the synagogues, I tried to force them to blaspheme. And since I was uh, furiously enraged at them, I pursued them even to foreign cities. With this in mind, I was traveling to Damascus with the authority and a commission of the chief priests when at midday along the road, Your Excellency, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and my companions. When we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It hurts you to kick against the gods. It hurts you to kick against the gods. I asked, Who are you, Lord? The Lord answered, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But get up and stand on your feet. For I have appeared to you for this purpose to appoint you to serve and testify to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which I will appeal to you. 
and to those in which I will appear to you. I will rescue you from your people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God and that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. After that King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem and throughout the countryside of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do deeds consistent with the repentance. For this reason the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. To this day I have had help from God and so I stand here testifying to both small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would take place. That the Messiah must suffer and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. While he was making this defense, Festus exclaimed, You are out of your mind, Paul. Too much learning is driving you insane. But Paul said, I am out, I am not out of my mind, most excellent Festus, but I am speaking the sober truth. Indeed the king knows about these things and to him I speak freely. For I am certain that none of these things has escaped his notice. For this was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. Agrippa said to Paul, Are you so quickly persuading me to become a Christian? Paul replied, Whether quickly or not, I pray to God that not only you, but also all who are listening to me today might become such as I am, except for these chains. Then the king got up, and with him the governor and Bernice, and those who had been seated with them. And as they were leaving, they said to one another, This man is doing nothing to deserve death or imprisonment. Agrippa said to Festus, This man could have been set free if he had not appealed to the emperor. Friends, so today we see his defense with the, in front of Agrippa the king. And it is very clear, very clear how he defended and how he spoke. And that is what we see here, the, uh, his uh, appeal to the uh, king. And he was very much uh, sure what he was speaking, what he was speaking. And that is what we have to be. He's not going on changing his uh, statements, his preaching. His convictions. His convictions are very sure, very true. When the convictions are sure and true, we are not worried about anything. So let us see what he is speaking today. Agrippa said to Paul, You have a permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and began to defend himself. So he was given an opportunity to speak. And he says, I consider myself fortunate that it is before you, King Agrippa, I am to make my defense today against all the accusation of Jews because you are especially familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg of you to listen to me patiently. And king listens to him very patiently. All the Jews know my way of life from my youth. So he brings how he was at the youth age. 
Our life is spent from the beginning among my own people and in Jerusalem. They have known for the long time if they were willing to testify that I have belonged to the strictest, strictest sect of our religion and lived as a Pharisee. You was a very fanatic, very fundamental, huh? very fundamental uh, Pharisee. That's how he wanted to oppose Jesus, a real Pharisee. But Jesus touched him only. So they have known for a long time if they are willing to testify that I have belonged to a strictest sect of our religion and lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand here on trial on account of my hope in the promise made by God to our ancestors. A promise that our 12 tribes hope to attain as they earnestly worship day and night. It is for this hope, Your Excellency. See now why? And now I stand here trial on account of my hope in the promise made by God to our ancestors. I am doing nothing wrong. God has promised to our ancestors according to the law, according to our prophets, and I am believing in it. Your Excellency, that I am accused by Jews, why is it? Thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead. So Jewish, Jewish people, they disagree with me because God raises the dead. This is what my conviction. Indeed, I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things against the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And he says he was uh, ready to do against the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is what I did in Jerusalem, the authority received from the chief priests. I not only locked up many of the saints in prison, but I also cast my vote against them when they were being condemned to death. And one among them in the Acts of the Apostles, I think chapter uh, 8, 7, where uh, I think 7, 7 chapter speaks about uh, uh, Stephen's uh, you know, defense. Then from there, you see it is here. Acts 7. Stephen's speech to the council. And at the end, uh, see uh, uh, chapter 7, 54 to 60. What he is telling? I, am, I not only locked up many of the saints in prison, but I also cast my vote against them when they were being condemned to death by punishing them often in all the synagogues, I tried to force them to blaspheme. And uh, since I was so furiously enraged at them, I pursued them even to foreign cities. So I chased them away. And uh, I am the person who did it. So arrogant. And here you see, when they heard these things, uh, they became enraged and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. See how Saul killed, destroyed and chased people away. Such a man I was, such an arrogant man I was. Imagine friends, conviction of Paul is real. So he says, I pursued them even to the foreign cities. With this in mind, I was traveling to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. And at midday along the road, Your Excellency, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and my companions. Now, third time in the Acts of the Apostles, Paul, uh, Paul's um, conversion is recorded. First time in the chapter 9, 
we have this 9th chapter verses 1 to 19 and second time in the chapter 22nd uh, verses 6 to 16 we have read it uh, in the chapter 22 he tells about his conversion uh, uh, in front of his defense uh, uh, in the council no in the council he says so now again in the chapter 26 verses 12 to um, 12 to 18 he speaks about his uh, conversion his testimony it's very important i saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and my companions when we had all fallen to the ground i heard a voice saying to me in the hebrew language soul soul why are you persecuting me it hurts you to kick against the gods I asked, Who are you, Lord? The Lord answered, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. So he's very clear what he saw, what vision that God gave him, what voice he heard in his life. And now that's how he was very bold enough to defend himself. So what is important today for us is the conviction. Conviction of the truth. That's why if it, uh, Hebrews, so if you take Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, see, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Conviction, the resurrection of Jesus is the conviction for us. Father, Son and the Holy Spirit try in what conviction for us. We have heaven, conviction for us. Eternal life, it's a conviction. Faith, the conviction is given by the Holy Spirit. That's why we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. In our baptism, in our confirmation, we are confirmed. Now we should not waver, we should not get disturbed, we should not go away. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. See, with the faith we can receive approval. By faith we understand that the world, worlds were prepared by the word of God. So now how do you understand the worlds were prepared by the word of God? In the beginning there was word. Or in the beginning uh, uh, God who created the heaven and earth scripture says so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible so what is seen was made from the things that are not visible so now Paul is convinced about this truth so that's why he says uh, um, you know but I am speaking the sober truth he says I am speaking the sober truth when Festus says uh, you are out of mind he can't be out of mind. I'm Jesus. I heard this voice, and uh, I have. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose. Every vision has a purpose. Every experience has a purpose. Every witnessing has a purpose. Even my preaching today. For you as a purpose. So what is the purpose? To appoint you to serve and testify you to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which I will appear to you. Now I am appointing you. As a priest I am appointed. As a Christian you are appointed to witness that Lord in your lives, in your families, in the society wherever you are but get up and stand on your feet for i have appeared to you for this purpose to appoint you to serve and testify to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which i will appear to you i will rescue you from your people and from and from the gentiles i'll rescue you to whom i am sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from power of Satan to God. So all preaching the mission is 
to turn people from the darkness to light from the power of Satan to God. Today you know that Satan is disturbing the nations, disturbing the authorities, disturbing this type of fundamentalist groups or fanatics. So to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light, only Jesus can turn us from darkness to light. The truth will set you free. John chapter 8, 31, you will come to know the truth and truth will set you free. And from the power of Satan to God. Satan is there always to destroy, disturb. He has come to steal, kill and to destroy. But I have come to give life, life in abundance. John 10:10. 10, 10. Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So now what is the reason? So that they may receive forgiveness of sins. The preaching mission should bring the forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by the faith in me. Faith in me. Yes, friends, we have from 19 to 32, um, Paul tells of his preaching, Paul appears, uh, Paul appeals to Agrippa to believe. Now, after that, King Agrippa, he continues after his uh, conviction and, uh, you know, testimony, vision, all those things, he continues, uh, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. So, I was disobedient to my arrogance, my all blind belief, I have to disobey them. Now, the truth I will come to know and truth has set me free, so I am not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and throughout the countryside of Judea and also to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do deeds consistent with the repentance. The gospel is gospel of forgiveness and repentance, sanctification. And through that we are sanctified and we go to experience our eternal life. So he says afterwards, after that King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem and throughout the countryside of Judea, and also to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do deeds consistent with the repentance. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. So this is the reason. I am preaching the gospel of repentance. I am preaching the gospel of uh, forgiveness. And this reason the Jewish people want to kill me. To this day I have had help from God. Until today I have survived. It is help from God. And so I stand here testifying to both small and great saying nothing. But what the prophets and Moses said would take place. So now, to this day, I have had help from God. And so I stand here testifying to both small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would take place. So that the Messiah must suffer. And that by being the first to raise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. Now that the Messiah must suffer and that by being the first to raise from the dead is risen, suffering, passion, resurrection and he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. So now we should be enlightened with the light of the word of God and that is Jesus revealed by the Father, revealed by the Father. Paul appeals to Agrippa to believe. While he was making this defense, Festus exclaimed, You are out of your mind, Paul. Too much learning is driving you insane. Festus did not understand what he was speaking and it was out of his mind also. So he told, You are insane. You are out of your mind. But Paul said, I am not out of my mind, most excellent 
Festus, but I am speaking the sober truth. Indeed, the king knows about these things, and to him I speak freely. For I am certain that none of these things has escaped his notice, for this is what not done in a corner. So Paul says it is done not in a corner. This is, everything is known by the king. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. Agrippa said to Paul, Are you so quickly persuading me to become a Christian? Paul replied, Whether quickly or not, I pray to God that not only you, but also all who are listening to me today might become such as I am except for these chains. So it is not only you, but all those people are listening to me and uh, they have to come to this truth except for the chains and I don't want them to be bound by chains and get persecution like me but they should come to know the truth and only that truth will set them free. Then the king got up and with him the governor and Bernice and those who had been seated with them. And as they were leaving, they said to one another, this man is doing nothing to deserve death or imprisonment. Agrippa said to Festus, this man could have been set free if he had not appealed to the emperor. So, they heard, he appealed to the emperor, then only this uh, Agrippa was able to sit and listen. Now, they are telling that uh, there is nothing. Again, they, they couldn't see anything that uh, to, um, you know, kill him. So, Agrippa said to Festus, this man could have been set free if he had not appealed to the emperor. This man is doing nothing to deserve death or imprisonment. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you, we glorify you, we thank you. Thank you for your love towards us, towards especially those who believe in you, trust in you. There are thousands and thousands of people today, you have transformed them from their arrogance, from fundamentalism, from their fanaticism, to the gospel of peace, love and joy. And those people have understood the gospel of forgiveness, repentance and eternal life. And there are many more those who still misunderstand and call these type of people insane and out of mind. Father God, you are the creator. This creation always obeys you. You created the humanity human beings and we pray for the human beings today those who are not in faith those who are those who are not in truth we pray so that you will transform them your ways are not our ways your plans are not our plans through this preaching Lord I pray all those listening to you be touched and encouraged to follow you like Paul. I pray for the people, those who are in need of your healing touch, people in need of your repentance and forgiveness, people who are in need of the real transformation. May that transformation happen in your name. I bind all the blocks, bondages, curses and disturbances. I bind the sicknesses. I bind the sick minds, negative ideologies, fanatic and fundamental ideologies. I pray so that the light will shone upon them, Lord. The darkness will vanish. Satan be defeated from their lives, Lord. I pray that the light of yours inspire them. Fill them with your glory, grace, anointing, Lord, as we preach this mission, 
especially through the gospel, through the book of acts of the apostles let that strengthen the faith those who listen to your servant i pray so that you will inspire you will touch you will transform people from their arrogance from their ignorance to the light and the truth that you are the savior very specially i pray for those people sick heal them suffering protect them and bring them back their good health as you touch the man in the pool of bethesda for 38 years the woman in the marriage for 12 years and deaf deaf and mute people mute people right now touch them lord in jesus name i pray may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen for the franklin this was our eyes of shumoga pray for me friends amen